Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of key science to hit today. Hopefully you caught part four of the Superstorm series last night. Some resources in there we're going to end up using on a nearly daily basis in the coming years. We're at spaceweathernews.com here and we find the last 24 hours on the sun was an exercise in watching quiescent features rotate. We continue to see bright umbral magnetic fields, but the spots are underdeveloped. Patches of coronal holes transequatorially, but mostly the bigger ones are at the polar region. We did get a jolt in the solar wind, however. Earth crossed the heliospheric current sheet overnight, that's up top in blue, the solar wind magnetic sector reversal, and it brought the KP index up off the floor, which also ends the cosmic ray health alert due to that low KP. Quick weather marks as the records are tallied up and having been broken in Alaska's snow season, and it was a short one. Meanwhile, to the southwest states, it's baking in record heat at the moment, and all while winter has finally arrived in parts of Australia, including the bushfire hit region. Wanted to quickly pull up our Blot Echo wind map. Those red marks are Blot Echoes and only a third of the seismic forecasting factor tree, but we do see that concentration there in the South Pacific. Map is at quakewatch.net. Germany up next, and when there's no water falling from the sky and none in the ground, does make for a rough agricultural season upcoming. Speaking of upcoming, here on May 1st, the Weather Channel has their outlook for the next month with more colors than I've ever seen them put on the map. Jet stream cutting diagonally across the country is what is driving this. Interesting story about record hail here. That stone from 2018 in South America is indeed likely to have smashed a world record at over 9 inches across. Now while we're here, there are bigger ice balls that fall from the sky called cryometeors, which can actually leave craters. Heaviest on record is 110 pounds, and the largest was over 6 feet across, but it wasn't weighed. Okay, one more cool bit of science here, and for everyone who says dinosaurs went in the water, you've got ammo in the clip today. A massive aquatosaurus, I'll call it, water-based dino, pieced together, reimagined. They do say it would be the first true aquatic dinosaur they've ever discovered. Now we're coming back to the sun. Looking at those switchbacks discovered by the Parker probe in the solar wind, the small magnetic reversals outside of the sector boundaries. The open question was how they could possibly form, and they are now suggesting that interactions with the closed or internally confined field surrounding it at the surface is the answer. By the way, these fields are what we were discussing yesterday about stellar magnetism triggering volcanoes on rocky planets. And speaking of planets, catching formation in the act. ALMA is spotting tons and tons of these segmented disks where they say baby star and planetary systems are being born. Well, let's go to the latter stages of that pregnancy. Not really a ring, certainly not yet condensed into planets. They have spotted the intermediate step of accumulation and aggregation. Now those were two grouping words, and here we need to go the other way, expansion and pushing out. These are cosmic jets, north and south, blasting out of the planetary nebula nova ejection here, just one of a few things that can pierce and disrupt the incredible ring and arc systems around celestial objects. This is one of the coolest papers we've had in a while, whether you're interested in the science behind the swirl or simply the aesthetic beauty. Link included below with the rest of today's other links. Quick note up next about the cosmos, more specifically the cosmic web. More more specifically, the distribution of matter within it. While they were not able to confirm any spin alignments, they do identify the core matter regions as hugging the axis of the filament, like red blood cells trailing down a capillary one by one. Well folks, we're going to the cosmic jets again, where the interior plasma torus resides. Surrounding the torus and jet is the disk of material that will form into galaxies or the planets spinning around the star. Now, by measuring the magnetic fields at high galactic latitude, over and over for various galaxies, they've come to the conclusion that there must be an even larger torus out around the entire disk. That's where they come down on this one. These are supposed to be individual rings of the larger torus. Welcome to a coherent magnetic field that must include a central current sheet. And hitting that sheet might be what the sun needs to wake up for the big show. They have studied the light curves of numerous sun-like stars and found much more variability on the other ones. Now while I think some of the star spots they're seeing on other stars are actually transiting planets, we do know sun-like stars blast much stronger than ours does. Nice to see that for the hundredth time. But now the scientists are forced to ponder if the sun has merely been holding back for a few thousand years, and she really does know how to party. 
Galactic Sheet Invitation, and RSVP in the mail. If you missed last night's video on Solar Blast, just Part 4 was not the one to miss, put it that way. Series takes a day off today so you can catch up if you need to, and if you need to, you need to. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.